Hello goblins, it's Chris, Eldritch Pipes. We are here with the first episode in the new Pipe Maker series. I've been thinking about this um, format, so I've, I'm sitting over in the corner here to the side of the frame with hopefully this area somewhat free for displaying the images that I'm looking at that hopefully you're going to be able to see too. That is the plan. Let's hope it works. All right. Episode one. We're looking at Phil Rivera. I met Phil over the internet about five or six years ago in the Pipe Makers Guild, which was then a kind of training ground for pipe makers. It was designed to be uh, a, a way to ensure quality and get pipe makers leveling up with their skills. Uh, it didn't last that long uh, and so it doesn't exist in that format anymore. It still exists in a, a, in a more casual format as a social group on Facebook. But in the guild is where I met a lot of important people, uh, great people, and Phil was one of them. So I thought it'd be great to have a look at his work. Hopefully now I've had a picture of him up in his workshop. That's Phil. Let's take a look at what he does. So, I asked him how to describe his style. And uh, he said, old school with a Danish twist, or modern retro, which I think sort of fits, but he might have slightly undersold himself a little. He put some quite innovative touches on a number of his pipes, but we'll, we'll go through those. This first pipe shows a number of classic Rivara touches. First of all, there's the, the brass detail at the end. That's either a, a, a deep ring or a, an end cap. And the other bit that I want you to notice is the that really razor sharp sh um, shank bowl transition. It's really super sharp. And um, that's, you're going to see that over and over again on his work. I kind of associate that with some American pipe makers. Also in the guild, there was a guy called Scott Harris. You might know him as Sparky's Pipes. And he also had this um, aesthetic of a, a really sharp shank bowl transition. So the first time that I really saw these like razor sharp transitions was with uh, some American pipe makers. But it definitely shows up on a lot of Phil's pipes. I don't think their style worked off each other. I think they kind of de developed their style individually. Maybe it's an American, maybe it's an American touch. I don't know. I wonder what Phil would say about that. There's also a feature of that pipe that we'll come back to. Okay, so the next one is a smooth pipe. And it's kind of a cutty, brandy, but with a Rhodesian style ring around the middle, which is kind of interesting. <laughs> you see the, the brass detail on the end of the shank. You see the super tight transition and acrylic uh, saddle stem. I think that Phil deals like 90% with acrylic stems. I don't think I've seen recently a Cumberland or a, a Nebonite stem. So I think it definitely favours uh, acrylics or resins for sure. 
And it kind of the reason I say it's it's not quite a, if it was a just a brandy that shape, then it wouldn't have the the slanted uh, rim, which is like a cutty, but the bowl shape is like a brandy. So it's a real mix of of aesthetics going on there, but it's also a lovely smooth. And this next one, I don't think I've seen anybody create something quite like this. It would be called something innocent like a panelled billiard or a panelled stacked pot, perhaps. But you can see that the shank has got six facets to it. You've got the the brass detail at the end and probably I can't see it in this photo but I'm imagining a super tight transition on that one as well and it's smooth that would have been a piece of work um, do see a lot of it's very classic staining and most of these pipes you're going to see they do all have this kind of classic classy look to them this one is possibly, uh, can you call it a contrast stain? It almost is. The, the tight grain is very dark and the, the, the wider grain is, is quite light. So it is like a contrast stain. Okay, this is like a a billiard but the, the reason I chose this one so you can see the brass detail you can see the tight shank and bowl transition but there's this interesting feature it's a it's a billiard but it is just so slightly canted forward maybe one or two degrees at most which is really interesting Thing that I've seen it might be another American influence maybe Danish influence I'm not quite sure but if it was an English pipe it's like 45 degrees but the that the American aesthetic is to slightly just open the shape up a bit um, which is very interesting I've seen a couple of American pipe makers do a similar thing. They just like to open it up. Again, I'm not sure if it's the, if it's a, a Danish influence or if it's an American aesthetic, but it does show up. This next one is a really interesting. It's kind of a cherry wood poker style. So it's got the kind of canted bottom that gives it the forward leaning. But the drilling will be more or less straight. Unless he's done a similar thing and canted it forward a degree or so. Because just a degree makes plenty of difference. Shaped with the grain. You can see the grain is sort of flowing up. Not sure about the staining on this one. The... The dense grain, the tight grain is, is very dark and the loose grain is very light. It's, the photograph looks a little desaturated, so it might have a top stain on it. But to me, it looks like it doesn't. So it's just stained, sanded back, and then, so sanded back to briar, and then finished. Obviously, it's got really tight transition. It's got the, the brass detail at the end, and it's got the fancy stem, which is another Phil Rivara detail that shows up quite commonly. You do see the very occasional taper stem, the very occasional saddle stem, but more often than not, it's a fancy stem of some variety.
what's next. Okay, so I pulled this one up because this is a little different. The ball is a is a billiard, but it almost looks like it's there's so much flow to the shape. It's you almost want to call it an egg. I wanted to call it an egg, but the more I looked at the bowl shape, it, it is a billiard. Um, but it's got that lovely. That must be that's the Danish influence, sort of building in that. That subtle S curve, well, not so subtle, uh, but building in that flow, that movement. So you've got a, a shank extension there. Maybe it's a ring. Uh, the the bowl transition isn't quite so tight on this one. Fancy stem, and then looks like it's just a yellow stain, perhaps. I would say yellow, because yellow, when it goes on to briar, gets pushed to the orange anyway. So it's an orangey-ish yellow. But that's like a, that's a really lovely example, sort of breaking away from classic shaping and going more into that Danish. But then I pulled up another billiard, but for a reason. You can see type transition, no, in fact this looks a little unfill Rivara like without the brass ring detail, but look at the grain on the bowl, that's super cool. Getting straight grain on a billiard is really hard, it requires being lucky with grain to some extent but also knowing what to do with it when you've got it. And in, see, in this, he's letting the grain speak for itself because he's not done a shank embellishment, he's not done a fancy stem. It's like, look at that bowl. Forget everything else, look at that bowl. And we are, we're looking at that bowl going, wow, that's really good. And... It looks like just a natural finish as well, no stain at all. I don't know if maybe there is a very, very light, but no, it looks natural to me. So that's super cool. Okay, next one. Going back into Danish influence, I was gonna say style, Kind of, it's a. This is a mix. This is like a, at the front end, it's Danish. At the back end, it's Phil Rivara. So we've got really nice grain, kind of. A, it's a Dublin style shape, but Dublin in the Danish style rather than in the English. Got a beveled rim, and then we go. Brass ring, fancy stem, classic Rivara pipe touches there. And that's just like, talk about Danish meets American right there. In fact, I was wondering about that stem material. As I look closer on it, uh, it does look like it has grain similar to a Cumberland. So it could be like a jade Cumberland. I know that uh, the SEM factory do a Jade Cumberland. It might be. Next we've got a Cutty. I brought this up just because it's like... A cutty is really evokes Old English to me because it's, it's, that shape was inspired by the clay pipes. And he's made a really sort of like long version here, but kind of pimped it with the pearl acrylic. It looks like a pearl acrylic here. Nice smooth. I'm just looking at what he's done with the rim. Again, it's like a beveled rim, which seems to me like a, like a, like a Danish influence again. 
and he's done his cutty with a foot. So he's part of the crowd that does it with a foot. I don't think I've ever done a foot on my cutty before. On this next one, I included this just because I thought it was kind of remarkable. It's a full bent. I don't want to call it a, a billiard. Full bent egg. Let's call it an egg. This time with a silver, silver band. It could be silver cap. And it's just so straight up and the look at the bend on that stem like 90 degrees bend whoop but as we will see Phil is not scared of bending acrylic well he may have been at one point but must have lost the fear a long time ago but that's a really nice I just like that full bend Okay, this is really interesting. So there's two here. I'll show them what, um, one at a time as I'm talking. These were kind of like metal tankard pipes with like a briar insert. I don't know where the inspiration for these came from. But I've never seen anything like them. Uh, super cool. I believe they're made out of either nickel silver or aircraft grade aluminium. Uh, that's what he said. And the work that goes into them I can't even think. Uh, working with aluminium. Aluminium is kind of forgiving but still you know to to work it and then polish it up. It's a lot of work. No two ways about it. I think I may have them if you've heard of the the Suj, the Japanese pipe company, may have done that tankard style. I'm trying to remember now if they ever did one that was like a, a metal casing. I, can't, I don't think they did. Um, I can't think of anything similar to those. Uh, if someone knows, put a comment in, but hey-ho. This next one, this um, bent egg, RC. So just like Phil showing off some more skills there. A little bit difficult to see, but it looks like probably tight shank ball transition. We've got the, the brass detail at the end. You can see inside the reverse calabash on that second photograph. And slightly fancy acrylic. Slightly fancy acrylic stem. <laughs> I didn't actually know. It was only when I was looking through... Uh, some pictures on his website that I had seen he'd done a reverse calabash. Don't know why I didn't know that before, but hey ho. And this photograph, okay, I put this one up. So this is like a, a billiard. It's um, but the reason I put this up is because I actually saw this one in the flesh, because uh, Phil Rivara for a time sold to GQ Tobaccos in the UK and so did I and one time I went and visited Glenn Quelch who is the GQ of GQ Tobaccos uh, when he was working there no longer unfortunately but when I was there he showed me around and I got to see some Phil Rivara pipes when I was there one Phil Rivara pipe while I was there and this was the one you can see the zebra wood shank extension. Now, this is the one of the things that I've noticed is that if there isn't a brass or silver uh, detail on the shank, the wood he's most he'll most likely do for shank extension is zebra wood. 
don't know if you can explain why that is, Phil. Maybe you just like it. It is beautiful. But I've seen quite a few Rivara pipes with a zebra wood, zebra wood, zebra wood shank extension. And that's just a really nice billiard anyway. It looks like you can, you can see just a subtle bevel on the rim uh, and then some, it's smooth, but uh, there's a interestingly wrought <laughs> sandblasting. Uh, I don't know how you, you would have masked that off very carefully. But actually some very decent grain on that billiard. Probably just with a light tan stain, it looks like. All right. Ah, okay. So if you remember the pot, which was the first pipe that we looked at, and I said there was a detail on it we'd come back to. It's a different pipe, but it has the same detail, but we're zoomed in a bit here. And it is the the rustication on it. I say rustication. It's a sandblast, but a very intriguing sandblast. This is one of the things that I really like about Phil, is that he's not a lazy pipe maker. A good pipe maker has one foot in the world of the things that he knows how to do and has one foot experimenting and pushing the envelope forward. And this is a recent uh, little new look that he developed, which is just really great because it's got the sand sandblast kind of feel but it has this geometric patterning and it's just, it's super cool. I wish I'd thought of it. I wish I had thought of it. Really nice. Um, and I wouldn't be surprised if you see people trying to emulate that look. But this is the thing. Uh, you just try and find inspiration from different things. And I know this was from Phil trying to replicate another look and created this which is just great. All right. <laughs> so we're on to Phil Rivara special. The acrylic calabash. Um, these are a piece of work. When I said <laughs> Phil's no longer afraid of bending acrylic, this is what I mean. Uh, you've got to have nerves of steel <laughs> to bend acrylic almost 180. Gracious. Gracious me. Anyway, um, sorry, I was just thinking 180, are my degrees right? Anyway, that's not the point. <laughs> So, wrought from a single piece of acrylic. Just the work that goes into these is something else. First of all, you've got the acrylic work, which is just terrifying to any mere mortal. Uh, banded at either end uh, with aluminium. So there's acrylic work, there's metal work, there's the briar cap which is what you're smoking from. So that you get all the benefits of smoking briar, which is what we love. I'll just show a few more. Slightly less extreme bends on those guys. And then the next one, just to show you some internals. So the briar cap just sits right into that cavity and behaves just exactly like a natural calabash, which is a, a hollowed out gourd, but this 
is acrylic. All right, so there you go. A blast through Phil Rivara pipe territory. I hope you enjoyed that. That was really fun. Wow. He's covered a lot of territory. So many skills and techniques involved in, in all of that work as well. I hope you enjoyed that. If you didn't know much about Phil Rivara's work, then now you've had your, your what, your deep dive into uh, what he's all about. All right, I hope you found that very interesting. I haven't thought about who's going to be next. I've got several ideas, but I haven't settled on one. So um, we'll have to see what happens. But, till next time, take it very easy, loyal pipe maker.